Are you nervous? And have you spoken with Donald Trump? I am not nervous. I have, I'm not talking about, I'm going to claim executive privilege on, on the Donald Trump conversations. I've had the greatest amount of support from Donald Trump and his team. And uh, he, he, um, he under, look, they can put me in prison. They can put you in prison. Make no mistake about that. And make no mistake about this. They are coming after Donald Trump with the same tactics, tools, and strategies they used to put me over there today. Okay? Think about this. Stripped of all defenses before a jury trial. That's going to happen to him. Democrats in all the jurisdictions he's in. Fannie Willis in Atlanta. The guy uh, in, in, in Manhattan. Uh, Bragg. It, and then, of course, Jack Smith at the Department um, of, of Injustice, as we like to call it on my side of the fence. So um, I'm pissed. That's what I'm feeling right now. But I'm also afraid of only one thing. I'm afraid for this country because this, what they're doing, should have a chilling effect on every American, regardless of their party. If they come for me, they can come for you. In the ongoing discourse, there's contention surrounding Peter Navarro's emotional state. Rather than mere anxiousness, it's posited that he harbors genuine fear, viewing it as a substantial concern for the nation amidst a landscape fraught with political onslaughts and legal jeopardy aimed at him and former President Donald Trump. This fear, attributed to Peter Navarro, is construed as a manifestation of anxiety, deeply rooted in the recognition of threats looming over the foundational values and principles that underpin the democratic fabric of the nation. His expression of fear isn't solely reactive to external pressures, but also serves as an acknowledgement of the inherent uncertainty and fragility that characterizes human existence, particularly in the face of injustice and political tumult. Peter Navarro's statements are analyzed as indicative of a steadfast belief in the imperative of upholding principles such as justice, due process, and the rule of law particularly in contexts where politically motivated persecution looms large. The scrutiny on legal matters surrounding both Peter Navarro and Donald Trump is perceived to epitomize a widespread apprehension regarding the integrity of the legal apparatus and the potential for partisan biases to erode democratic norms and institutions. Peter Navarro's utterances underscore the perils associated with the politicization and weaponization of legal processes, especially within the framework of a hyper-politicized milieu.